สวัสดีครับ Good evening and welcome to Sunday July 23rd 2023 edition of Sunday in Thailand or SIT in short with me Varin Sachadeo your host The three seasons in Thailand have been humorously mocked as being hot, hotter, or the hottest. But in the past three weeks, no other places are hotter than Thailand's parliament. On July 13th, Pita, the Prime Minister candidate, lost in the parliamentary vote and failed to be elected Prime Minister. Then, on July 19th, Move Forward Party made a second attempt to nominate Pita for Prime Minister once again, in hopes that there would be more votes from the House of Senate. But this attempt was voted down as parliamentary rules. Do not allow a repeat nomination of a candidate who has already been nominated and failed, unless the nomination presents a different scenario. Two losses back to back, no doubt, turned the house on fire. Unfortunately, it's the House of Parliament. Pita's failing has stirred up a vicious response from his supporters, known as Orange Fandom, as well as critics and academics who have been speaking in favor of Pita and move forward. Mobs were organized and took the protests to the street. There were gatherings in Bangkok and in the township of few provinces to condemn the House of Senate for not voting in support of Pita. Though it's been made clear several times in the past two months that the general election in Thailand is to elect members of parliament. Or representatives of each electorate, not to elect prime minister. Each political party can submit a prime minister candidate and nominate him in the parliament through a parliamentary process. Normally, a coalition that will form a government will be honored to nominate its prime minister candidate first, but it does not guarantee that the candidate will win the nomination. In short. To call any elected MP a PM designate is totally misleading. Thailand's general election does not produce a prime minister designate, but the party with the biggest win may anticipate that its PM or prime minister candidate will have a better chance. After the parliamentary session on July 19th, which disapproved the repeat nomination of Pita, Western and foreign media started publishing news about Pita's ineligibility for prime minister nomination for the second time. This, coupled with the order from the Constitutional Court to suspend his duty as an MP, due to the allegations that he concealed his shares in a media company, ITV. Yet it sounded like when it rains, it pours for Pita in just one day. This streak of bad luck provided a sumptuous meal for Western media, which continue to publish false information and mislead the fact that a person who holds shares in media company is disqualified from running for the general election. And the information they present shows intention to criticize Thailand's House of Senate. In a derogatory manners, just like Western and Thai media, which view Thailand's parliamentary system as something which goes against consensus, Matthew Miller, U.S. State Department spokesman, said recent legal cases are of concern. 
Miller's statement made the news on July 18th after the U.S. ambassador to Thailand had previously said the U.S. government would not interfere with the decision Thai people made. And why do foreign diplomats like Matthew Miller or the Western media do that? Joining me now is Kun Pat Sangham, our editor for Sunday in Thailand. Good evening, Kun Pat. Sawadee krab. Sawadee krab. So we've been talking about how the information about Thai politics is being distributed world over through the eyes and through the lens of Western media. And uh, the story keeps repeating itself. It's funny how they relay the story in this manner this time because at the election in 2019 and before that, because the general election did just take place for the first time this year, they never said similar thing about the Thai parliament or the House of Senate at all. So obviously there was some kind of agenda I speak English as a second language, and I don't understand why foreign media, Western media, couldn't understand the meaning of the word candidate and the way the parliamentary session works. There are uh, different kind of parliaments in different country. In England, there are three houses, King in Parliament, House of Lords, and House of Commons. And their prime minister is elected through their British parliamentary process. So I don't understand they're playing naive or they're serving a particular agenda. What could be those agendas? <laughs> I'll leave it to their imagination. But from the point of view of Thai people, it's an interference of internal affairs because... Uh, if you want to be a respectable media or government, you would not criticize other countries' parliamentary system. Every country has its own. You know, in America, as we know, the president was not elected from popular votes. And as we remember how Hillary Clinton didn't become the president, Donald Trump became the president from electoral votes, you know, so everyone in the whole world respects the American system. So why would they have a lot of saying about Thai parliament? Mm. And from their coverage, I get the impression that what we've been having in the past is dominated by the military and uh, the Senate are appointed by the uh, the former uh, dictators, even though they are already uh, in the parliament after the election in 2019. We're not denying that they are the appointed Senate. And of course, this uh, government that we had since 2019 is the, uh, the government that came fresh out of the uh, coup. But how do we explain to the world that this is actually a, a democratic system, but they're not respecting uh, the rules. I mean, they've, they've done it to themselves. The House of Senate came with this constitution back in 2019, and the people approved it through consensus. You know, more than 16 million people approved of it. And so if you look through the history of the parliamentary sessions for the past four years. Okay, let's start from 2019. The House of Senate voted for and against different issues. They are uh, elected by the military if the Western media want to see it that way. But then they didn't vote everything for the military because the government... Uh, under General Bayut's administration, uh, voted for a lot of issues, and they did not vote just to support them. Let's say if they see the current government as a military, military regime, and in the situation that has just happened 
recently with Pita and Move Forward Party, there were senators who voted for them in their favor. So didn't they come from uh, military appointed uh, just the same? And the majority of the senators cast no vote. If they really served the military who appointed them as being seen, why would they refrain from voting? Can we also say that their behavior seemed a bit like a dictator uh, in itself? Because if something is in favor of them, they will stay quiet. But if something goes against uh, their will, they will take people uh, under hostage. They will threat to have mob on the streets and they will not uh, take the the ruling or, or the decision made by uh, the system that easily, which is happening now as well. Uh, why, why can't they admit that is actually uh, Pitha's own mistake by not reporting uh, the shares that uh, he owns of ITV, the, the media shares, which is you know against the rule to be to be running for for the house or to be elected as a prime minister. Exactly. They have been screaming democracy. They have been claiming that they are the democratic side of the story. But if things go their way, they approve it. If things don't work out the way they expect that they say is dictatorship. So, you know, all the examples that you just quoted was very vivid that they are not democratic at all. So what would be the ulterior motives of these Western media or Western diplomats who are commenting on what's going on in Thai politics? Have you ever seen uh, Thai politicians or Thai media, or Thai politicians, uh, Thai media, yes, we have been criticizing uh, what's happening uh, in the world in terms of geopolitics. We do that on our show, but Thai politicians commenting on what's happening in the U.S., Thai media, foreign media, Western media, these are all human beings. And I guess they haven't done their homework and they kind of follow what has been shared, what has been published through the main media and uh, on the internet and stuff. You know, if they have done research, they would understand the parliamentary system they would be informed of the allegations that Pitar has faced, but instead they get uh, overwhelmed by the information such as he, uh, Pitar is a Harvard graduate. He came from a um, business family and so on and so forth. And the Thai people uh, are crazy about his star quality. And I guess some of the foreign medias just kind of go along with it instead of doing research. You know, um, let's talk about the allegations. You know, if uh, any candidate for presidency or prime minister in foreign countries, uh, let's say Western countries, face allegations, would you just go along that they have to become the president or the prime minister without considering the transparency or the honesty of this candidate. You know, you would want to elect the country's leader uh, who is not clear of allegations or who is not honest because honesty is the most important merit in becoming the leader of a country. What about Thai media who's, who've been sympathizing with um, Pita and, and, and turning the blind eyes to uh, his mistakes? Apart from, you know, the shallowness of their reporting, they don't really care about the uh, rules of law as much as they should have. And like I said, they're all humans, you know, so they can be 
overwhelmed with the star quality. And this is what uh, the big group of people, you know, uh, he's very popular. So as a media, in order to sell their news, they want to go along with it. They, you know, they want to serve what the people want to read. By ignoring the ethics. Ignoring the ethics completely. I don't want to make any accusation that some of the media have been serving of, you know, the Move Forward Party or PITA for a price, you know, but you just can't help but wondering. Exactly. So what's next? When we will have uh, the next Thai Prime Minister, how long will it take? And uh, what's what's next from now? I would say, you know, uh, just yesterday, uh, there was a big development concerning the forming of the government. The coalition seemed to... Uh, play a different game and nobody has come out to admit that they have moved to plan B or plan C. So I guess they're going to come out saying diplomatic stories from now on and it will be not sooner than two weeks, I guess, because when the new coalition has been finalized, each party will have to explain to their supporters why they're doing this, you know, why they change the scheme and uh, the leader of each party will have a lot of explanation to do because each party is not thinking about today only. You know, for example, Pum Jai Thai Party has become more and more popular. And of course, they will think about the future. That in the next election, they will have even a larger votes and they're hoping to become probably you know, the most popular political party. So they cannot just jump on the boat and start rowing. You know, a lot of explanation to do. Also, the smaller parties who are expected to join the new coalition. They're gonna have to explain too, because for example, uh, Rum Thai Sang Shad used to uh, rely on the popularity of General Payut. Now General Payut is out of the picture, but then his legacy stays on. So by joining Pua Thai Party, who is supposed to be the leader of the new coalition, Ruam Thai Sang Chat, will have to explain a lot to the people who support General Payut because many under don't really understand politics very uh, insightfully. And they're just against Ruam Thai Sang Chat being part of Pua Thai. Yeah. Um Everything that they do will have consequences for sure, because this government might not last uh, the next four years. So uh, the next election might be happening soon as well. So uh, whatever they do now will have consequences. And already uh, Pirata is being under attacked by the Move Forward uh, fans. And, uh, you know, they've been showing uh, all the uh, digital footprint of when uh, the Pua Thai leader said that they will not join Palang Prasharat. If, if Palang Prasharat decides to join Palang, if Pua Thai decides to join Palang Prasharat, he will step down as the leader of the party. So now they are, he's being held uh, hostage of all these, you know, things that all these politicians have been saying during the campaign. As Shakespeare has put it, at the world's a stage, and we're all players in the production. So the script can change, you know, as long as you can rationalize it. In this case, the general election took place on the 14th of May, and it has been more than two months. And if it's dragged on like this, the current administration would have trouble because the fiscal year comes in around September mm. and big decisions have to be made. So it's important that whatever compromise that they can make 
And if the new government is formed, the country can take another step forward, you know, and this is crucial time for the whole world. A lot of challenges are waiting and, uh, you know, every country is doing its best to keep the world spinning. And so by dragging on like this with no answer, just doesn't help Thailand at all. So should the public see it as a compromise or these are lying politicians? <laughs> what does it say about, you know, the quality of the Thai politician or is it the same everywhere? There are people who are sophisticated, more sophisticated, and there are people who are naive. Those who have followed political news or have been into Thailand's politics for a long time could put the pieces of puzzle together. But those who are new, they look at things on the surface. They cannot understand why people twist their words, why MOU is not honored and things like that. So uh, I would say once again that uh, there's a lot of explanation to do. And one thing to do is for each party to explain to their supporters why they have to compromise for the benefit of, you know, the country, not to stick to their own words and nothing productive comes out of it. It's no use. And I think, uh, you know, the veterans of Thai politics are very familiar, you know, with all this which is happening at the moment. So uh, it's just the negotiations and, you know, the power, uh, a game for the power hungry people. So um, as long as nation's interest is put as a priority, you know, we're okay with it. So uh, let's see how it unfolds. But that's a wrap for this week's edition of Sunday in Thailand. Thank you for joining me, Kun Pat Sang Tham. Kun Pat Sang Tham and um, I myself, Warin Sajdeo, we're both signing off. Thank you for watching and look forward to seeing you back, welcoming you back to the show next Sunday at 7 p.m. Swadi Krap. Swadi Krap. Welcome to Naughty by Elizabeth. Spending quality time with your children is not just about the quantity, but also the quality of the time that you spend together, even for just five or ten minutes. Sometimes, they just need you to sit nearby and listen to what they have gone through each day without judging them. Or, sometimes they just want you to play with them for a moment. Remember that children learn best when they are happy. That's why playing with them is the simplest but the most precious time that you can observe their feelings, problem-solving skills, and decision-making. Don't forget to say, well done, or give them high five when they achieve even little things to build their self-confidence. So, to create quality time is the process that matters, not just the end result. 